Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Spirit Hunter NG. Previously, we defeated another ghost, and then we had to make a hard decision between our two friends. We are loving our lives. My head is full of fuzz the next morning. The sun is bright and shining, but all I can think about is Marahashi's last moments. I should check the situation in Kentucky but I can't muster a shred of energy to get up. Staying up all night has left me exhausted. Can't say the shock has faded either. It's not the best idea, but I stay in bed until evening rolls around. The events of last night pop into my head over and over when I least expect it. I can't count my times now. Somehow, someone I know fell victim as a result of going after spirits. Damn it. It's no question this is all Kakia's fault, but I'm the one who keeps dragging everyone into this mess. What could I have done? This is the result of working with Ama no Minahazuki. If I don't tell anyone, I won't have resources to help save Ami. Whatever I choose, someone dies. No neatly wrapped up comic book happy ending where everyone's saved here. When Ami disappeared, I sent a stop at nothing while going after Kakia. But coming face to face with a person's death like this, my determination wavers. My heart is slowly being shredded to pieces from the horrible dilemma I find myself in. It's Amanome. So I did a lot of thinking on this. And I decide part of me heavily wanted to go to the the girls route because there's obviously some attraction between our protag and her a little bit. It's not like crazy, like, oh, anime, I love you, or anything. But they got like a little bit of, they got some clicking going on there a little. So I want to see something like that, and I need some development there. But at the same time, I think Amanome has been very loyal. He's been kind of, as would you call a Kyodai, a bro. And I feel like maybe his commentary, despite not knowing ghosts, may be a little more interesting. Of course, I get both endings anyway, so it's, it's either way, it's the same thing. But let's go with Amanome route, so you'll provide better commentary. Hey, Akira. Sorry for all the trouble last night. It's nothing. How's your leg? Oh, practically a scratch. I'll be completely recovered in a week. It's no big deal. What about Marahashi? They found his body. The cops are pressing for details of the higher-ups. As a result, the office has been in uproar since noon. You all right? Huh, is that a concern I hear? Well, Pops obviously grilled me for answers, asking if I knew anything about it. But it's not like he believed me if I mentioned Kubitaro. So I played it off like a smooth talker I am. I see. But there's still a problem. Because of this mess, Pops is suspending me. Marahashi been under my wing, so it's just a supervisory liability manner. I mean, his voice while he talks is calm and matter-of-fact, as usual. But all I hear is how he's desperately restraining his emotions. I keep trying to break out of the house, but security's tight. No success yet. I want to help you so I can avenge Marahashi, but... I don't think I can move for a while. Sorry, Akira. Thanks so for all your help. You got me a lot already. Thanks. Oh, then I thought I'd hear that from you. This apocalypse coming. Oh, by the way, I did get Hazuki safely admitted to the hospital. Though with her being Miss Famous a cult idol, I had the fast talk explaining our relationship. How she's doing? A little injured, but it's not the extent of mine. Her wounds will heal, but... What do you mean by that? She won't wake up. She hasn't regained consciousness. She's completely comatose. I tried to get answers from the doctor, but... He claims she would have woken up already. They don't know what caused it. How could this? Wait, Kaki said something before the lightning striked. <laughs> so, this is a little convenient kind of thing. They basically wrote out both characters in a way, although I think one's gonna provide commentary from the background. Is this all her doing, too? 
Hopefully she'll make a full recovery soon. Yeah. Oh, looks like Pop's coming. I'm gonna hang up. Yeah. I'll go down for a while and get some rest. Hey, Akira. You feel responsible for what happened to Maruhashi and Hasuki, don't you? You're probably afraid to get anyone else you know involved any further, right? Not so. I chose to help you on my own. I take full responsibility for anything that happened to me. You don't need to carry that for me. You're just sticking your nose in where you don't have to. I'm a nome, you. Don't put it all on yourself, okay? Later, man. The phone call cuts off abruptly. I'm a nome. Saying his name out loud settles, settles something in me. I've known him for a long time now, but... I never considered relying on him as much as I do now. I've got to pull myself together. My chest beats with my newfound resolve. Right when I get off the phone... Why am I suddenly so popular? Is there anything I will bond now? I check the peephole. Oh no! What are you doing here? Huh? It's that detective. Oh, wait. There you are. So how about coming by so late, Kijima? This is about Ami again. I already told you guys everything I know. That's not my reason for coming today. I'm here to ask you about something else. There was a murder in Kentoki last night. The victim was one of Mitsuru Marahashi. A member of the Amanome family. You know anything about it? No. I don't have a TV and I don't read the paper. First I've heard of it. Why are you asking me? Because we saw you there. I've already confirmed that you are acquainted with the deceased through Amanome. You've also been wandering around Kentucky lately. There's no use trying to deny it. Weren't you the one who skipped out on questioning two days before the incident? Going by your face, I'm right. I suspect it was you from the description. It seems I hit the nail on the head. So why were you snooping around Kentucky? You ain't got anything on me, copper. My lips are sealed. Got something to hide. I can walk wherever the hell I feel like. Why do I have to explain everything to you? Jeez. You're quite uncooperative, kid. Hey, open my door for you. That's plenty cooperative. Anyways, are we done here? I wanna go to sleep. Fine, I'll take my leave for now. Oh, and for your information, I'm the only one who's connected to you that questioning. You to that questioning. I haven't submitted a report on it yet, so you won't be subject to other officers coming by. So, this is all just you going on a hunch and suspecting me. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm not interested in you. The spirit way of army, and the dog killings in Kentucky. You just happen to be involved in the cases I take an interest in. Anyway, see ya. Always for slips fade away. That uh, detective. For some reason she's fixated on cases involving ghosts. There's some strange detectives out there. What use are these bars? Well, I can't stop a single ghost. Maybe it's a relief it's squeaking out a sticky situation, but I'm suddenly sleepy. I could fall asleep on my feet right now. You go to sleep a lot. This is all we do, we just go to sleep. And then we hope nothing bad happens. Collapsing on the bed, I shut my eyes. I can't just keep, let this keep happening. It's time to take care of it so I can move on. Living or what are you since so much information? I think I'm feeling much better. Sleeping past noon probably helped. Guess anger and sadness fade with time. The shock and disbelief are still there, though. Those have definitely not disappeared. I keep flashing back to the scene of death I'd seen in my sight grows dim. 
Nothing happens today, and soon night falls. I still haven't heard the sound of Kakia's flute. That should work. I take a brief after hiding Amanomi's modified gun in the back of my closet. They'll never check there! I'm just inviting promise if I carry it around. Only he can use it anyway. Besides, weapons aren't my thing. Na 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 na. It's a number I don't recognize. Hello? It's now Masaban. That Amanoma boy told me the cunt to do from now on. Come to Shinja Station right now. Same place as last time is fine. Alright? What do you want? He hangs up without answering. Dang it, I should've said something clever. How do I manage to surround myself with all these self serene guys? It'll be faster to get to Shinza Station if I take my bike like last time. The ride might improve my mood too. Coming on my bike, I head toward the station. Game of Death. Bond and Rose. Maybe because it's late, but there aren't many people running around the walkway. Looking around, I spot Bond smoking and staring at the next guy beyond the handrail. Damn, he's so, so hard boiled. Like a part of his sky with view as a moon tower. You finally made it. I was getting tired of waiting. What happened to Kubitaro of Kentoki? Did you break your curse? Yeah. We defeated Kubitaro. And as you can see, I managed to survive. But... Sounds like a lot went down. You promise to tell me anything you know. Don't forget. I'll hear you out, so tell me. I explained to Bon what happened two days ago. But I don't tell him about Maruhashi. Bon quietly listens as I talk. Every once in a while he jots down a note. I see. I'm impressed, honestly. A Yurishima woman and Kubitaro. An amateur like you took down two spirits. You might be more remarkable than I first thought. Bon appears to be appraising me. It makes my skin crawl. Your turn, old man. You said you'd investigate Kakia. Find out anything. Oh yeah, that's right. I asked an acquaintance who's familiar with ghosts about it. But Kakia's game. Kakia's game. A doll-like girl calling herself Kakia appears and sets people into a peculiar... game. With no other details, people were stored to calling it Kakia's game. The game is what you've gotten yourself mixed up in right now. So you're saying... There are other people who got mixed up in this game. Not just me. Yeah. For whatever reason, Kaki appears every ten years. And every time, the body count of missing and dead is high. Even restricted to only confirmed. Do the victims have anything in common? Age and gender don't seem to matter. However... It seems everyone receives a black postcard right before becoming involved. A postcard that was outside my apartment. Benelements Pouvelet. That was my Nami's invitation. The look on your face, you know something. Yeah. Has anyone survived playing Kakia's game? Nah, no one. Kaka keeps playing until her opponent loses. There's no way to survive it. Loser's feet is always tragic. Missing. Vegetative coma. Insanity. Death. No one returned to normal life completely okay. Ah, <sighs> so blunt. No point in showing consideration to guys. What? You want me to be gentle with you? Which one's the one he likes? Eh, let's be mean. Doesn't look like you want that. Believe me, I don't want to babysit either. Oh, almost forgot. You're free in the evening two nights from now, Kijima. My acquaintance is stopping by your mom's bar that night. Got it? Good. 
Hey, just hold up. Why the hell do I need to meet with this person you know? Don't look so displeased. It's a young woman, and her face isn't bad. Her personality, on the other hand, she knows a lot about ghost-related things. She's the one who told me about Kakya's game. I'm sure you'll hear some interesting things from her. Sounds like she'll be a better off source of info than you. Fine, I'll make sure I have time. Never short on the comeback, I see. By the way, Kijima, got any money on you? A little, I guess. Sorry, but could you lend me some? I know the Yuji match paid you pretty well. Let's see, 10,000 yen will do. I'm good at paying you back next time. Huh? How? Extorting money from a high school at your age. Forget it, old man. No, I'm giving you money for no reason. I see. Guess I'll just give you one then. Information referral fee, 10,000 yen. I think that's pretty reasonable, though I'm willing to drop it at 5,000. That's a steal. Man! I just want to get rid of him at this point, so I give him his 5,000 yen. He's gonna be helping from here on out. So I think that's not that bad of a deal, considering. <laughs> oh, thanks. Good luck when you meet her. Yeah, see, it comes back to my point. Basically, our entire cast, except for the idol, is just it's just a scoundrels. Our all our main players are just scoundrels. <laughs> Waving his hand, Bond walks down the stairs and directly into a pachinko parlor, open late. What a bum! I come on my bike and drive full throttle down the expressway. The road's empty at midnight. At home, I devour the hamburger meal I bought on the way way back. This has become my staple diet. I can't find the desire or energy to cook for myself while all this is going on. It's kind of sad, because you said that he was a good cook. When I'm full, I decide to go to bed. That journalist guy, Bon, suddenly comes to mind. He's got an uncanny knack for getting info on spirits. But man, he's definitely shady. They were living our many lives. Two days have passed since the night I met with Bond. Today I'm supposed to be with the ghost expert lady. I decided to get to the Black Rabbit ahead of schedule. Kakia. I tuck into the underpass. A chilly breeze is blowing. I feel tension in the air again. Ah, great. A familiar melody echoes down the alley. <laughs> Good evening, mister. Suddenly, Kaki appears before me. The air freezes with suspense. I struggle for breath. You're amazing, mister. You beat Kubitaro of Kentucky. I didn't beat anything. Because of you, Marahashi is. And that lightning strike. Was that because of you too? <laughs> that was so fun. Didn't get your heart pounding, Doki Doki. Hazuki's coma. Don't tell me that you. It's boring and no one disappears. Don't you think it's more fun like that? Damn it! Are you annoyed? Do you want to quit? But mister, you have to play with Kakya. We'll play forever and ever. I'm stuck, completely helpless. I realize I've been biting my lip. Could you fearfully run out of ghosts? 
There's only so many ghosts out there. There is a, a finite number. Just get the Ghostbusters in here. Just hire them. Pay them some money. Like, listen, she's gonna make us play this game. So, like, fight these ghosts. Just suck up every single one, and eventually she's just gonna run out. The foul taste of iron spreads from my mouth. I thought of the next game already. It's the Screaming Offer game. If you don't play, you'll disappear too. And Ami will never come back. Ami. Kakia, tell me. What's NG? New game. Hey Kakia. What's NG? I heard Ami mentioned it in my vision. Oh, okay. Oh, so they ask a question, you're like, oh, well, just, but bye, bye A wind blows and Kakia suddenly vanishes. Where the hell did she go? I carefully look around my surroundings, checking the shadows around the pillars and shutters. But Kakia is nowhere to be found. What if someone's controlling Kakia? What? That squeak. Mary? Kakia. A Kakia doll, too? <laughs> NG. Me and Daddy's secret. If you learn the secret, I'll have no choice but to. She is a doll. Kakia vanishes again. Because Mary worked on the same logic, it was like every so many years. I feel like I've been stabbed in the heart. The burning hatred she was aiming at me. She's never acted like that before. NG. That might be the key to figuring out what Nakakia's deal is. Screaming offer. Next spirit, even if he doesn't, next game will start. Is there a chance to get a jump in Kakio somehow? When I get to the Black Rabbit, the lights are already on. There's not not to be inside. You're late. I got tired of waiting. The woman is sitting at the bar, nursing a drink. Slowly, she stands up. I've never seen her before. There's no sign of Aunt Natsumi. This lady must have snuck in somehow, but... She can't be. Are you gonna be... To complete the set, we have to have, like, the femme fatale? I was bored out of my mind. So I helped myself to a drink. Relax, relax, I'll pay for it. I might not count out the society's norms, but I draw the line at stealing top shelf alcohol. Then you should drop by the bar more often. This place is pretty much dead. I should not not see me would love a regular customer. Huh. I figured you'd be way more shocked. You've got some backbone. And a cool head on your shoulders. You deserve a prize. Bond said you had nerves of steel. Seems like you had your type nailed down. If you know Bond, then that means... You're some kind of ghost expert lady. That plebeian has no talent for delivering a proper introduction, does he? Assess Levy. I suppose I should do the honors myself then. Rose. Yeah, Rose. Rose. Mulan. What kind of name is that? Not my real name, obviously. It's just my stage name. Though I may not look the part because I do not use a silk hat or a baton. I'm a magician. Why does a magician know so much about ghosts? Is that more of a monk or a fortune teller's alley? You know, spiritual people. Let's just say my personal circumstances did not dictate my profession. More precisely, a lady who was a supernatural savant chose to become a magician on the side. Are you just interested in the supernatural, like a certain famous occult idol? No, I wouldn't say that. My interest is a little more... serious. 
And if we get to know each other better, maybe I'll even tell you all about it. I feel like you're gonna backstab me somehow. I just, I don't really trust the two new people I'm gonna have to team up with. Rose narrows her eyes and smells at me ominously. Suddenly a sickly sweet scent hits my nose. Oh dear, are you put off by my rose perfume? So you like this, do you? Now then, shall we get down to business? Bond told me about what you've been through. I'm sure you have plenty of questions. I'll answer your inquiries as best as I can. So, what would you like to know about? NG. NG, what's that? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. Apparently it's a big deal, Akakia. Is it now? I regret that I can't give the answer you want, but I haven't the fetus idea, sorry. Is there anything else you want to ask? It's Kakia. Bond told me about Kakia's game. The Kakia doll forces humans she likes to play games with her. So it's not just me. Other people have been dragged into this. But they all have to do the stuff I'm doing. No, apparently the type of games depend on the target. It could be a game of marbles, cat's cradle, or even hide and seek. Man, that sounds like a cakewalk. Yes, I guess a kid like you would say it. You're playing on nightmare mode. She must really like you. Difficulty settings aside, the only thing that waits in the end is despair. Because Kaki keeps playing until her opponent loses. Is there anything else you want to ask? Play marbles? You keep winning, and, and she's like, where, where is it down? Like, we're gonna play marbles again! And again! And again! And for all eternity! How about if Kakia targets like a, a pro fighting game player? Is she just gonna keep playing over and over again? Just play like she'll she'll play them in Street Fighter or something, and she'll play uh flowchart Ryu, just flowchart Ryu, because she, she's just basic at the game. Like I don't know these games. I'm an ancient doll, and eventually, just eventually, she'll get that one fluke win when the player jobs. It'll take like a year, but she'll just keep playing them. Boop 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 boop. Ugh, so many interesting scenarios. Spirits. The spirits are manifestations of the souls of the departed who bear strong grudges. To banish a spirit from this world, you must learn about its past. Yeah, I picked up on that part already. Are there any other tricks that can help? Like using talismans or scattering salt? Oh, child, you read far too many comics. I had one piece of advice to give. Hmm. I'd say the most important thing would be to try to emphasize with the spirit. It may seem like a monster now, but it was once human. Like most humans of a grudge, are typically lonely and desperate to be understood. I don't get it. Simply put, there's no easy way to do it. Sorry I'm late, Kijima. Good work playing Q&A, Rose. Rose. Drat, you actually showed up. Alone time with this cute boy was a much more appealing proposition. I was just thinking about giving him an intensive private lecture, too. What a pity. By the way, Kujima, thanks for last night. I found a slot with a nice little bonus game and I fitted the money you gave me. Hit my first jackpot in a long time. It was great. I mean, I lost it all the next day, but hey, gambling's all about the thrill, right? Bon. Are you telling me that you extorted money from a high school to feed your gambling addiction? Whoa there, extortion. Me. I did nothing of the sort. Quit assassinating my character. I just collected my fee for the work I did. I only charge him half price because he's a kid. That's pretty much charity coming from me. Someone should have taught you this earlier. But a truly charitable adult would have never approached a subject of money to a kid. By the way, you better not have qualms with the funds I gave you the investigation, too. Have you discovered anything at all about Yakumo Moroku? Rome wasn't built in a day. I literally just started looking into it yesterday. I'm still in the pre-information gathering phase, so... I've just canvassed the neighborhood so far. I heard some wild rumors I bet you'd like. You have been hearing screaming coming from the shelters after... Yakumo Moroku's mansion. 
Screaming from the house of a chill offer. It can't be. Hmm. Kijima, what's that look for? Hey, old man. Can you tell me more about that rumor? No sweat, kiddo. It's part of my report to Rose, anyway. There are odd rumors about Moroku, about the Moroku residence. They say that. Rumors of the screaming offer. Hey, have you heard about the Moroku residence? You know that old mansion where Yakima Moroku, the children's offer, lives all alone. You've been hearing some weird screaming from that coming from that place lately. Not just once or twice, but every night. It's Miss Y from the neighborhood went to complain. But that mansion doesn't have an intercom. So she had to go right up and knock on the door. She pounded on the door and nobody came out. The screaming didn't stop, so she kept coming back day after day. Still no response. But she was sure someone was inside. So she finally got fed up. I free screaming for the window to get the person inside to notice. Then suddenly, the light in the second floor window came on. And then, she heard a faint voice. Please don't look inside. The voice kept pleading with her softly over and over again. Please don't look inside. 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 Don't look inside. Miss Y heard a scream, and after that, they said she was tormented by constant screaming inside her head. She had a nervous breakdown and committed suicide. Ooh, they didn't even reveal like even the outline of the ghost in this one. This could be a spooky one. And that's what the rumors say. It certainly sounds supernatural enough. The peeking taboo, a common canard in these supernatural stories. Someone pokes her nose in somewhere it doesn't belong and gets punished for it. The crane's wife and Pedora's box are famous examples. It's a scream of that screaming offer that Kaki was talking about. Without realizing, I speak Kaki's name out loud. Obviously, Bond and Rose aren't going to just let that go. Kijima, you met Kaki. Yeah, a little while ago. Hey, why didn't you tell me? I thought I told you to tell me everything. Don't go frothing in the mouth, Bomb. Pursuing spirits is deadly work. He was probably just worried about us. You need not bother, Kijima. Bond and myself have decided to hunt spirits of our own volition. We accept the consequences. So there's no need to hold back for our sakes. Tell us everything. I guess there's no dodging it. I tell them about the screaming offer that Kakyo told me about. <laughs> I see. How fascinating. To think the screaming offer could be hiding from the Moroku residence. You sound like you're enjoying this. Why are we looking into, Moro into the Moroku residence? That's only for grown-ups to know. Once I forget how trustworthy you are, maybe I'll fill you in. This lady's a walking bundle of secrets. She hasn't even told me why she has invest why she was investigating Moroku. You may be an adult, but you're not trustworthy. I much prefer younger men, not ones facing down a midlife crisis. So, did you uncover any other notable clues? I told you, this is still in the early going. Imo doesn't reveal reveal itself that easily. I want to talk directly with Moroku, but the house has been empty for a long time. Probably off gathering material for a new book. Oh, he's dead. Empty, you say? It might be that Moroku's already dead. Dead? As I told you earlier, spirits are born from the crutches of the dead. If we assume that Moroku had died and become a spirit, all the pieces fall into place, no? You're looking for the screaming author, after all. Hey, don't jump to conclusions. I've confirmed Moroku hasn't been reported dead. Because no one's gotten to the house. It wouldn't be uncommon for someone who lived alone and died without being noticed. We'll just have to go see for ourselves. Hey, you can't just assign stuff like that. 
What are you even gonna do that? Investigate, obviously. I'll leave my methods up to your imagination. A lady should never have to stain her lips with such words. What? You gonna break in or something? Well, more or less. Though he's dead and really absent, it's a perfect opportunity to sneak inside. This is shaping up to be an amusing night. Let's be cool. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying yourself too. If you encounter Kakia, the clock on your death is already ticking down. You have no time to be taking it easy. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. They also say, Fools rush in where angels fear to turn. We leave the Black Rabbit and head to the station. It's getting pretty late. Most stores are closed. <laughs> Nighttime is the greatest time of any day. I hate sunlight, and the summer sun is particularly harsh. If you're so scared of UV rays, you could try wearing something else. Come on, let's get to the Moroku place already. Hey, hold up. I don't know where the Moroku residence is. Obviously they know. Oh, that's right. It's on the outskirts of Kisoji Temple. It's a bit of a hike from here. There's a station by the mansion, so it's just taking a train. Bond gives me the address of the Moroku residence. It's in the same ward, so I can pretty much imagine where it's just based on the address. We should meet up there later. We'll stand up if we show up there in a group. I have no objections to that plan. We're just a young man, I'd feel otherwise. But I'll decline the stroll of an old lech. That's an easy way to ruin a perfectly beautiful night. <laughs> That's my line. Hard pass on walking around town with a woman trying that hard to turn hands. Be at the front door in my 30 minutes, okay? Bond and Rosé go to their separate ways as they head to the ticket gates. I better hustle too. There were more named Rosé, suspicious magician. Fairy tale offer Yakumo Moroko lived by himself. Second floor, don't peek inside multiple times. Pete screams inside the head. I'm trying to think of what legend Yakumo Moroku would be tied to. I'd have to think about it. Yakumo. Well, I don't think it's tied to Left Cardio Harn. Is it? Because his name's name was. Was it? Did he change? I, I talked about this in my, my Toho playthrough. I thought he changed his name to, um, yeah, Koizumi Yakumo. So I think it's. Is it like Cardio Hearn? Huh. I'll think about that. There could be another legend I'm, I'm not mixing in correctly. The address I'm going to is a train stop away. Luckily, I arrived before the last train. I reach the station without any issues. The classy residential area is full of cookie cutter homes, and I quickly lose my way. I walk around aimlessly for a while until I arrive at the building I was looking for. Ah, you're here. Rosé and Bon are already waiting at the residence. You're late. What the hell were you doing? We've only got a limited amount of time to search. Wasting more time, and today will be useless. Useless! Limited. Why? This area's had a high rate of unusual incidents, but they only happen sporadically. Because of that history, the police have this area under priority patrol. Seriously? That's a pain for us. Yeah, we did some legwork and we have a rough idea of the patrol schedule. We're trying to limit our presence to when there's a gap in the patrols. So we need to get in, investigate as much of the place as possible, and then split. That's the plan. We'll be trespassing. But it's a price we have to pay to get the information. As if you took so long to get here, we've got even less time than we were hoping for. Two or three hours should be sufficient to do some breaking and entering. We're investigating. Rosé continues, paying no attention at all to Bond's objection. The rest of this appear to be terribly large, so we shouldn't need to rush things. Well, unless we encounter an irregularity. An irregularity. An unexpected circumstance. For example, we find items with security, an underground vault, those sorts of things. The type of things that might crop up during a break-in. Feels like you've been doing this a lot. I see. We are not breaking in. <laughs> Why are you so up on the terminology? The action is the same, isn't it? 
Ah, what should we do? We're investigating this mansion. We've already settled on this. Yes, I mean, where should we start first? Kijima, you're the one tangled up in Kaka's game. You should decide. Alright. Oh, you're both hanging out with me. Okay. There's a strange looking window here. You know, this house is kinda odd looking. Looking closer, the building's funky style isn't even just a Japanese and Western mix design. It feels like an Alpine Lodge, but built with traditional Japanese style. This must have been a custom job. You know, as you see two story houses without a roof, that knows probably where the attic is. If so, that's a pretty big attic. If the room under the roof is that big, it looks like it's bigger than two normal sized rooms. Is that the window that was mentioned in the rumor? If you throw something, the lights on the second floor window will turn on. Hmm. I guess you wouldn't need to throw something at the first floor window, so that must be it. This looks like it hasn't been cared for in a long time. There's weeds and dead leaves all over. I take a look inside the mailbox, but there isn't anything inside. It's a pretty sturdy sliding door. There's a layer of dust covering the door rail, so no one has been moved for a while. According to the rumors, they said something like, Nobody comes out even if you knock, right? I'm sure knocking shouldn't be a problem. I give the door a kind of firm knock. Wait for some kind of response. Well, there's no response. Just as we were informed. Judging by the state this place is in, Roku probably isn't living here. I push the door, but it doesn't budge. Hello. I use my foot to poke around the overgrowth. My foot bumps into something solid. I tease the object out into the open and see that it's a decayed wooden door plate. It's dirty, but it seems to read Moroku. Let's throw something in the window. Even if this hit the window dead on, it probably wouldn't break it. Are you actually gonna throw it? Yeah, just like the rumor said. If there's something crazy going on, I want to know about it now. That's pretty courageous of you. You need that courage if you didn't survive the confrontation with spirits. I've already survived two of these. Whatever, just not try to throw it too hard. I know. I don't want to attract attention, so I don't want to break the window. I take aim and toss the plate, aiming at the wooden frame of the window. My throw hits the spot and makes a dry foot as it strikes the wood. Nice throw. You got some nice shoulders. The most anticipated draft player this season. Sorry, I don't really know baseball. All I know is edginess of my soul. Well, the rumors say if I throw something at the window, we'll see the lights come on. Or so the rumors claimed. Nothing's happening. We wait a while, but it doesn't seem like the lights are coming on anytime soon. Hmm, I was hoping that we'd get to hear the voice from the rumors. Sometimes rumors are just rumors. A good journalist knows not to trust every single one. Let's hurry up and check out the other places. I pull the door just in case. Since it doesn't open, looks like it's locked. Oh, I want to just kick it in? Whoa, you're already thinking about breaking in. You're too reckless, kid. Damn. <laughs> what a bold child. I must confess, I do prefer the direct approach sometimes. It feels like the air just changed. 
Whoa, it's weird. Did you hear something just now? Look in the direction of the voice and see. The light in the window had to come on. In the light, we see what looks like the silhouette of a crane. Suicide? Looks like rope. Once again, we hear a faint, weak voice. Don't look. So we're not gonna look. We're not gonna just go back now, are we? Hey, Kujima. There's definitely something in this mansion. That means that all rules are off. So we're breaking in. Exactly. Calm down there, boys. We can't cause too much of a commotion, or we'll draw the attention of the police. You got a plan then, Rose. I'll open the lock for us. It's not like opening a can, you know. You really think you can't open that easily? This lock may as well not exist. You should always have more locks in the front door, but nobody ever bombers. Oh, that's right. You should share this advice with the owner of the Black Rabbit as well. The lock there is just as pitiful. That explains it. Don't know how Rosie got in the Black Rabbit before it opened. You're a real piece of work. Did you just sleep through morals class? I regret that I did not get to experience things like school during my childhood. I told you, it was a team of scoundrels. Rosé took out some tools and quickly got to work. It kind of reminds me of when Amanome picked the lock at Yamato's shrine. But Rosé's skills were far beyond ours. You seem pretty skilled at this. Makes me wonder if you've been doing this kind of thing in the past. My goodness, how rude. Rosé shoots back at a response as she uses her fin tool to probe the lock. Any talented magician would obviously have a bit of dexterity. You flirting on with me? That's true, but... I've heard of magicians using escape magic, but not for breaking into places. Huh. Are you curious about my skills? I'm afraid that I must ask you to refrain from any inquiries that would violate my privacy. And voila. It's open. You're done already. You're pretty amazing. <laughs> I must say it feels quite nice to get some awe and admiration from the young. Would you like to be my disciple? Are you supposed to be like Fujiko from Lupin the First? <laughs> I think that was her name. What is that supposed to mean? I wasn't really planning on becoming a magician or a burglar. Yet. Magician burglar, huh? Huh. I wouldn't mind training you forever. But I was referring to the spiritual field. You seem to have the affinity for it, disciple. Hold on. I never agreed to be your disciple. Masters choose the disciples. Your opinion doesn't matter. I was asking out of courtesy. That's terrible. Hey, let's cut the chit chat. We don't have a lot of time. If it's open, then let's get inside. We can't let anyone else see us like this. We don't have an excuse for being here. Yeah, I know. I forcibly pulled the door open. That fire felt a cold breeze from inside. Swallowing my saliva, I step into the mansion. The Morocco residence looks like an old Japanese-style house. It smelled of damp, moldy air. Seems like this place hasn't been aired out for a really long time. Wait a moment, Kijima. I said someone watching us. Be careful. Watching. <laughs> uh, that's too early. Ow, that's hurting my ears. Sounding a loud, high-pitched, piercing sound rips from my ears. Oof. Oh, that hurts. I, I should have turned on my headset. I instantly cover my ears, but the sound above me is fruit and stabs in my brain. Ugh. Ponderose collapses behind me. Shit, are you kidding me? At this rate, I'll die! I fall powerless against a storm of sound assaulting my mind. My consciousness and my ears are starting to fade. 
screaming voice suddenly stops. It did sound kind of like a bird. I don't know if we even mentioned that. What was that? Bloody hell. My head is still pounding. I guess that must be the screaming voice people are talking about. If it were on any longer, my brain would have melted. I barely survived that. Well, we don't know if that's true yet. Remember in the rumor, Miss Y who heard the scream apparently committed suicide. <sighs> Things are starting to get real. Kijima, don't say you want to run away now, alright? As if. The other one was looking pale. <laughs> You've got the wits to sass me like that, you're still in ship shape. Well, if the plan they take us down, I suppose we don't need to hold back either. Let's start scout. I mean, investigating. The place doesn't seem that big, so let's investigate whatever we see. Yeah, but before we get to that, we need someone to be on the lookout. We don't want to be getting surprised by a patrolman. Right. If something looks bad, call me on my cell phone immediately. Understood. Alright, Kijima, choose you will investigate with you. Let's go with Rose. It's kind of your jam. Dajobu, Mondainai. Well, Bon, you're on the lookout, do you? Fine by me. I'll see you later then. Rose, don't you go up doing anything on your own. Bon leaves and heads outside. Alright, let's get going. There's a cedar plate hanging from the mud wall. Inspecting further, I see there's a single nail hammered into the upper middle of the board. Looks like this nail is for hanging things. What do you think this is? It's obviously a frame. These flat frames are made to be enhanced objects that are three-dimensional. So this is a frame for some kind of painting. And this is like a painting. It can be used to display anything. Just hang it on the nail there and you're done. Anything could become an art piece. And that's it. Feels kind of lazy to me. Well, as Ju Chomp's fountain showed. Hmm, that's too much of a digression. In any case, it's a board to make something decorative. Sturdy shoe cabinet. I open but couldn't even find a single shoe inside. Instead, I find something black and cylindrical at the corner. Bamboo charcoal. That's one fine charcoal. Seems like Morocco was quite the hobbyist. I looked for the bomb section as well and found a can in the back. It's apparently a spray can. Looks like a spray paint. Seeing that's an odd place like this, I assume it's not just art supplies. It is kind of random. Yellow. Open the door to the living room and step inside. I haven't seen a jump scare in a while. An old pendulum clock. Pendulum swings without stopping. Woo! It's a wooden storage shelf. I try pulling on the door, but it won't open. It seems to be locked. You think you can do this one? I turn around and ask Rose. Dajopo, Monday night. See, you do probably have to take her. She unlocks everything. Rose whips out some fin tools from her pocket and she opens the lock in just about 10 seconds. Sorry for the wait. Open sesame. It's like a magic trick. I'm happy that I will entertain you. I open the door. Sailor uniform with cute socks. These look like children's clothes. Did Maroka have a family? Bond didn't mention anything about that. Blood stain or just staining in general? Check around the sofa near the bottom. Hand warmer. I've had unopened hand warmer. I can use this. Okay. Hey. 
pattern of a little bird wings in the socks. Mmm. It's a bedroom. Jump scare. Jump scare. Looks like it could be a jump scare. A cuff of fly on the floor stands up from the eerie bedroom. Of curiosity, I pick it up. I quickly read the flyer. Kisoji Ballet School Recital. March for Kisoji Center Hall. There's a girl dressed in a white in a ballet pose with her legs raised high. Looks like a flyer for a children's ballet recital. Hmm. Children's ballet, you say? The atmosphere of this place is more suited towards Japanese buto. Take a close look at the flyer. First act, collection piece of ballet, of her second act, lock this cane. Second act will feature girls who are too young to wear pointy shoes. Point shoes, rather. Please enjoy their energy and spirit as they perform adorned in adorable colors. Ah. Uh, what's the stuff we're in for the second act? Is it Lannan? Je suis désolé, but that's actually French. Lac de Scon, Duck Lake. Speaking from the name, it must be a death of Swan Lake. I kind of figured that already. As soon as I saw the ballet thing and like the bird motif that seems to be going on in this chapter, I was like, Swan Lake? It's very random. Uh, but we'll see where this takes us. It'd probably make the little ingenuous be ducks instead of swans to dance about. Seems like a show design that showcases our energy as opposed to grace. Ducks sound a lot less impressive than swans. Oh, you think so? That stubby body, those adorable orange beaks and feet, the way they shoot for the water. Ducks are far cuter than swans. Supreme champion. If I were to receive a gift, I would prefer ducks over swans. No one's gonna buy you either of those. I'll take the flower just in case. There's an odd bulge in the current. I recognize that bulge. I pull the current back to see what's causing it. Huh? Nothing's here. Uh-oh. No sign of anything that caused the current to bulge. Even things out the window look normal. So it's just wrinkled or something. Ooh. That gem kind of creeped out. That's one sturdy bed. I wonder what caused these stains. Now that I'm looking, there are more spots than I expected. It's a high class western style bed. I take a look around the bed. I find something that looks like a mass of hair under the bed. Clump of stiff hair. What is this? Hmm. I think this might be horse hair. It can only be used for something like bowstrings for a violin. How can you tell? I learned how to play a number of instruments in the past. Perhaps I may not look at the part, but I was born into a pretty wealthy family. I have a good foundation of knowledge concerning most high culture, including music. You said you didn't go to school? Well, you said you didn't go to... I don't know, maybe you were homeschooled. Well, why don't you take it with you? It might prove useful later on. Yeah. There's a western style pillow on the bed. They get into the pillow, I immediately feel something. There are just funny items everywhere. Okina mask. A no mask. What's this doing here? It's a boombox. Looks like a pretty old one. There's a drawer on the table the boombox is sitting on top of. It's in the boombox first. Looks like there's a cassette tape inside. I check the tape and take a look. There's just a single letter written on the label. T. What a creepy tape. Would you mind playing it? I'm curious about what's recorded on it. 
Sure. I wish I could sit back into the slot and hit the play button. Hmm? It seems like no matter how many times I press it, it's not going to play anything. Maybe. I flip the boombox over and check the battery compartment. It's empty. It doesn't have any batteries. Of course it doesn't work. Maybe batteries in the drawer? Stick of incest neatly put away. In the corner I see a square metal box sitting there. What's this? Battery. Oh, oh. It's been quite a while since I've seen one of those. You know what it is? A battery. And a pretty old type of that. What's wrong? Just curious. How old are you? I'll leave it to your imagination. Take out the battery and put it inside the compartment in the back. Thankfully the battery types were the same, so it fits without any issues. Alright, how about now? I press the play button. But... What? You're kidding me! Use this piece of... I think about using the flashlight's batteries, but I realize that they won't fit. Perhaps there's not much battery life left. Maybe over warming up, we'll put some charge back into it, but... Warmed up. Where can I warm things up in here? Hand warmer. Hold on, warming it up. I use the hand warmer. I have this. Open the bag, crumple it, and place it on the battery compartment in the back of the boombox. I suppose that's logical, but it's not the best way to do that. Sh -sh Shut up! We just need to warm the thing up, right? Once the battery felt warm enough, I tried pressing the play button again. Then... It's a recording of the kidnapped girl report. They refer to the victim as Child T. Age 13, long hair. She's wearing a white one-piece dress on the day she went missing. She was last seen heading home from a ballet practice in classes. Class practice in Kusoji. The report mentions that it's been a month and the case is now a partial public investigation. From that point, the newscaster just rehashes information on the incident and... Once the news moves to the next topic for the day, the recording cuts off. Rosé checks the tape and sighs. I see. Hence the tea label. The owner of this house seems quite intriguing. It's crazy no matter how you look at it. Why make a recording of the news about a kidnapping incident? Once again, ballet. It's come up too much of a coincidence. Did, did they offer abduct people? Said the ghost, maybe the ghost is like the little girl. Oh, who's the phone? Suddenly the phone rings loudly. I can't see anywhere in the room. Intriguing. Let's answer it. Guess I'll look for it. Here it is, the phone. There's a black phone on top of the storage shelf. I don't remember every detail of this room, but it definitely fell off. This phone wasn't here when we came through the living room earlier, right? What's going on here? This is just a chapter that's just hurting my ears. <laughs> we are in this house to answer that question, are we not? Someone or something wants us to answer the phone. So why don't you take the call? Hello? Mushy mush. Aw, oh, crap. The phone suddenly goes dead. A sudden wave of distance hits me and I finally hang up the phone. When I come to my senses, I notice my hand is covered in sweat. Damn. What the hell was that? Who was calling? Don't know. The person hung up immediately. I see. How boring. You look rather pale. Is something the matter? It's nothing. 
My phone vibrates in my pocket. It's time already. It's me. Almost time for patrols to show up. Let's wrap it up for the day. Alright, we'll leave immediately. Is it time? Yeah, let's head back out. We got the mantle of our name major, major issues. We rejoin the one who was keeping watch and quickly shoot info we gain in our search. I told you, aren't we glad aren't you glad we went inside? That T shape in particular was quite a fine. Come out with that ballet flyer, it has some grave implications. <laughs> Why do you look like you're enjoying this? If that's what we found on day one, I sure to think where this is gonna end up. But you're whining, just admit it's been a worthwhile night. You even heard the rumor and scream. It must be a spirit. Probably a screaming offer's doing. The spirit's all that remains of Yakumo Moroku. Or is it someone else entirely? I can't wait to find out. It's only a matter of time before the cops show. We better split up. We'll meet back at the Black Rabbit at the same time tomorrow night. Yeah, sounds good to me. Oh, that's right, Kijima. Don't forget to buy batteries. I'll try anything once, but I'm not doing that again. Ah, what a pain in the ass. We part from the Moroku residence and take our own separate path to the station. As I walk by myself down the street, I think about what I heard in the tea tape. It might just be the creased tip of the psycho iceberg of stuff hidden in the Moroku residence. It's a spooky chapter. It's got a little bit of a slow burn. I'm afraid of what we're gonna find. I catch my train, and by the time I get back to Kasoji Station, it's already past midnight. Ooh, witching hour. I break out home and we get some rest. Ah. Uh. Weird. When anyone uses that phone booth. Photo booth. <laughs> photo booth. The pho photo booth. It's a photo booth. I open the curtain, look inside. You, yeah. Ooh. No one's behind the current. Right behind you. Could have sworn someone was there. Were they just seeing things? Bah. Text. D Man. Heard your next riddle. Search the monster that raises his voice when awoken. Make an alarm clock. I open the fire alarms made in the store and find a card inside. Now you work. Last time I think I checked you and we were on the right run. Well, I'm against the writing on the card. Kaka's game. The sound of a flute, a young girl appears. The shins of rumor is a, of a ghost with white hair. A child doll in the kimono. It said the two naive of full moon means she's shown herself. She lures people to play her game, different for each person. From finding items to courage to us, but each has a certain condition to be meant for survival. Meet the condition survive, otherwise they most likely die. If we never spoken to any of the players, I can't confirm for sure. It is still only a rumor, but the reason why I haven't talked to them is that those who challenge her game end up dead. And I suspect there's no way to escape her death game once you've met her. Past there have been legends like girls playing Kakuyako with many celebrities with this one. While researching, I learned it's been repeating every few years since the war ended. I must look further. And that's where you come in. It's fortunate that you are in this exact situation. The very person I need to talk to regarding this rumor. Why is she called Kakia? Why does she take doll form? Why play games and what role does she play? Is she a guide to death or the reverse? Or neither? Is she connected to a fairy tale named Legends you've seen off in recent years? Find out and keep the game alive. If worse comes to worse, I'll gather your ashes for you, D-Man. What the hell is he hiding these cards? Too much effort to worry about, might as well just go home and sleep. 
I solved D-Man's riddle, so I don't feel pretty satisfied with myself. <laughs> I just can't imagine like puffing up his chest. Go going missing. Child T. That part bothers me. I'm tired. Guess I'll wash my face before going to bed. Uh oh. It's just me. Where is it? No, it's just me. What's that noise? It's coming from the next door. Weird TV set. Wait, no, it's a laughing ghost. A movie. Or maybe a video game. Shit, that's loud. The noise won't stop. My temper's hanging by a thread. Oh, remember this? The noise follows you. It makes you want to, like... I'm assuming it's so bad of it, so you just, you just do yourself in. But punching the wall work. Punch it. Yeah, boy. Always works. It finally stopped. Ah, maybe I'm one of the plants. This will work. That looks about the right amount. I water the plant. Alright, that should do it. Better get some rest. I'm weirdly sleepy. Who was the phone? Who could be calling me? This chapter is pretty, uh... It's gonna be a little bit on edge. This is me want to stop ringing so I reach for the phone. Hello? Oh, crap. You're in the line silent. All I hear is breathing. Huh? What the hell? Hey! What do you think you're doing? <laughs> Chills run down my spine and my body and multitude strokes to slam the receiver down. That voice. It sounded familiar. Someone pranking me or... I'm probably trying to call again. I guess I'll just lie in bed and wait. I shut my eyes and wait. The room is quiet and it doesn't seem like anything's gonna happen. I must be tired after all. My consciousness slowly fades. Luckily I'm not bothered by another phone call. <laughs> 